When you take commit out of a relationship, everything goes out. If you put a gun to my head and said, what's the most important thing, and there are many, it would be Well, good morning and welcome to Time Out This Morning. My name is Jack Vint. Thank you for joining me this morning and taking some time out of your schedule. Now, how do you move your relationship from good to great? Is that possible? Because everybody, I believe, wants a good relationship. But everybody also should deserve a great relationship. As a matter of fact, I believe God wants us to have a good relationship and a great relationship, especially when it comes to to our relationship with Him. Now I'm going to show you this morning a key, I believe, that can unlock a door that can help you to move from a good relationship to a great relationship. So don't go away. Now, I want to say that, you know, we aren't trained in relationships, as I said before, in our lives. It's not, you know, you, it's, you, you, you start and you're thrown into the deep end and people say you need to swim and that's how you learn. But it's not a great way to learn. And they are a better way. So I want to say this morning to you, uh, share something with you that you can learn how to have great relationships with somebody. Because relationships is always about people and normally about two people. And so your relationship can be moved from good to great if you apply this secret in your life. This, uh, this, what I'm going to share, this principle with you this morning. Now, relationships I've always said are complicated <laughs> they're not as simple as what people assume but just because your relationship is complicated doesn't mean that it cannot you cannot understand it and that it cannot be a great relationship you know it's people say it's like riding a bicycle you know once you have ridden a bicycle you can always ride one now anybody can get into a relationship that's easy but how do you make that relationship great now it's I say it's complicated because, you know, in relationships, there's not just two, uh, two wheels uh, that attach to, to a frame and a chain that moves it forward. And I love uh, bicycles because I ride them a lot. It's like having a hundred wheels and a hundred chains and they all move in different directions. But just because relationships are complicated doesn't mean that you can't understand them. So you may ask, where do I start? Well, the first thing you may want to do is to say, where am I in my relationship with the person uh, that I'm speaking about? Uh, because if you don't know where you are, how do you know where you need to go? And so uh, you have to start with somewhere. Now, I, I always use this very simple method uh, of how to rate your relationship. And perhaps this morning you can rate your relationship as you're listening to me. Now, many years ago, I was counseling somebody. They came in, a couple that were married. The husband came in first and we chatted. And I said to him, listen, on a scale from naught to 10, how would you rate your relationship with your wife? Naught being absolutely terrible and 10 being like made in heaven. <laughs> and, uh, but don't always, and I just said to him, don't use the last day or the last week because perhaps you had a dispute and a fight and it's going to affect your rating. Uh, tell me about how, how would you rate it the last three months or the four, last four months or five months? Give yourself some time. And he was very confident. He said, an eight. <laughs> and I thought, well, an eight is great. You know, now people say, shouldn't it be a 10? Now, well, relationships are never perfect. So when you live in a 10, it's very hard because uh, there's a lot of pressure. And I don't believe that relationships should be perfect to be great. And so it just has to be right up there. You know, if you can get your relationship over seven and uh, eight, nine, ten, it's wonderful. It doesn't have to be a ten. To, it doesn't have to be perfect. So when he said eight, I thought, wow, that's great. Why are you here? <laughs> what can you tell me? And then his wife came in and I asked her the same question in front of him. And she, without hesitation, said four. Now, he had an eight and she had a four. And he almost fell off his chair because, you know, um, he was thinking, well, who are you married to? <laughs> to you. <laughs> now, why is there such a big divide between how people rate their relationship from a four to an eight? And here is the key I want to share with you. It's called communication. When you take communication out of a relationship, everything goes out. I believe if you put a gun to my head and said, what's the most important thing? And there are many. It would be probably 
communication. So you may ask, how do I communicate more effectively to move from good to great? And that's what I'm going to speak to you before, uh, right now on. I'm going to speak to you about how to move uh, your communication um, from good to great. And I, I, because there are many ways to communicate, I just want to choose four. And my four may not be your four. And, uh, but I want to share with you the ones that I think are the most important. Now, when you hear communicate, you say, well, you need, we need to talk more. Not necessary. As a matter of fact, words and speaking are not on my top three when it comes to communication. It's only rated number four. And I'll, I'll get to words in a while. And, uh, but let's start by the most important thing when you speak about communication is listening. You know, uh, and is it easy? No, I'm not great at it myself. I have to, I have to learn. Still, I, I'm always learning how to be a better listener. But listening would probably be uh, right up there. I always joke to say you have two uh, hearing aids and one answering machine. So for everything you answer, you should listen twice. And that's just a joke, but it is true. Now, uh, listening, listening, when you listen, you hear something that you don't always hear because you speak. As a matter of fact, your words drown out stuff you can hear if you take time to listen. So take time to listen. In other words, before, before you answer, before you come with a solution, which often we want to do, listen. And when you finish listening, listen again. Because the longer you listen, the more you will learn how communication works in a relationship. The second one is my favorite that I always speak about is attitude. You have to adjust your attitude in communication. Now, it's like that attitude meter in a plane, you know, it, it prevents the plane from crashing because it keeps it parallel to earth. It's called an attitude meter. And, uh, and you think, well, I set my attitude, it's fine. I don't have to adjust it. Well, if that plane flies over flat land, it's fine. But if the terrain changes and there's a mountain range, you can't have the same, uh, same elevation with the plane. You have to change the plane to get the attitude right. And that's exactly how it works with our attitude. In relationship, you have to keep adjusting your attitude depending on the situation. So it's not, it's not a constant. It's a variable that you have to work on all the time. Work on your attitude. When people say in a relationship you've got a bad attitude, it simply means what they're seeing is something that's not positive for them. They are saying you're seeing me through eyes that are not positive. So adjust your attitude in a relationship constantly and you will be effective in communication. And the third one is body language. Now, when somebody is talking, especially a wife, and she is making a point and she turns to her husband and says, don't you say anything. And he says, I'm not saying anything. But he is because of his body language. <laughs> body language is very important. It is also a way of showing off my attitude. So body language is a great way to communicate. And you say, but how many, how much body language can I have? Well, there is a lot of body language you can use in communication. You just have to work on it. Now, have you ever seen a couple sit on a bench holding hands, looking out at the sea? Nobody is speaking. Nobody has got an attitude. All they're doing is using body language to communicate. Try to use body language in your relationships to communicate more effectively. And then the fourth one would be words. If you have to say something, say something. But just be careful that your words aren't just thrown out there but are deliberate. Anybody can speak something just um, off the cuff. But to be deliberate takes time. It's almost like writing an essay of 400 words and then somebody comes and says, listen, I know you wrote this in 400 words, but can you reduce it to 200? Can you take the most important words and keep them and take the other ones away? And I'd like to think that's what you should do when you communicate. Only use the key words. Take all the other words away and you'll find that your communication be much more deliberate and practical and effective 
in your relationship. Remember, words can build up and words can destroy. If we are deliberate, we throw out the ones that destroy and we use the ones that build up. And we only use the words we need to be effective in communication. I believe that when you learn to communicate in a relationship, you're going to find just these four things. You're going to find that your relationship could move from good to great. And I'm, I'm asking this morning that God would help you because um, relationships are complicated, but you can understand them. You can move them from good to great. My name is Jack Vint. You've been watching Time Out. If you've enjoyed this video, you want to share it with somebody and you want to comment on it, remember that uh, you are helping me in making social media more positive. And if you want to join the VIP group that I have for Time Out and I share with in the week, you are welcome to do so. I'm really encouraged by just uh, you being here and listening. God bless you and I'll catch you next week.